Merck or anything first? Sure. Your best buy or my what? I already have the camera on. We'll just edit the video. Have your dough rolled out? No, we're going to have dough. Roll the dough. You want me to roll it? Well, you guys already did for the pre prep, right? We didn't do the roll, did we? No, you didn't. Okay, you did. So we have to start with roll. Gotcha. Do you need anything specific to put it on? Just a cookie sheet. Cookie sheet. Yep. Did we turn the brightness down on? So, so actually, this, that might be all right. Yeah, just any, yeah. I'm going to move on to dead flowers. And dirty water. Dead flowers, dirty water. Better get. Well, Jennifer and Aaron, thank you again for coming, showing up, helping us with our cooking. You know, people are taking yeah. it seriously when they call panicked that they need to get our emails. <laughs> oh, so you have some people. I like it. You have yeah, some people call, go, tuning in you tonight. You still my, my Sorry, let me and just. I, I, I just wanted to make sure you're on. Echo, Do we even know how to do that thing? Do we just get lucky? Bye. We're gonna take a picture of it tonight after we get it. <laughs> I think it's this. Okay, now I gotta make my screen bigger again. No, no, no. Oh, it's so we are. Oh, I don't oh, really spotlight you. Give me the spotlight. I need to shine. Now is it fixed? Yes, thank you. Did you dim that or was that dimmed on purpose? Um, wasn't me. So okay. yeah, more light the better. Okay. Great. Okay. Then we got the hood on. I did before I like test with you. Great. <laughs> oh, Do you want the one under the cooktop? Huh? It's on. I think yeah, it's on. Uh, yeah. yep. It's not light coming through here though. No, no, no. The cushion. Sure. So, oh yeah, those two lights are coming there because I don't have my little piece of. Where are those, honey? Those what, little, do you need them in there? The little pieces Aaron? of. Uh, well, we don't want to. We don't want to film with cardboard. Is that what you're referring to? Do I need what? No. We're not going to put cardboard in. We've got a lot of natural light coming in. I think that's fine. Yeah. I think it'll look good. I grew on these bottom ones under cabinet. You guys tell me when you're ready. It's 559. I'm ready. Oh, wait, I need a water. Okay. 
Do you have people in the waiting room? Let them out. Let look, them out. Let's go. Look sharp. I'm just getting my water. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Figaro, 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 Figaro. Alfredo and Sante Spinach. With homemade pasta. With homemade pasta. Or do you start with homemade pasta? So what we're going to do is we'll, yeah, we'll make mise en place, everyone. <clears throat> make sure we have our mise en place. Make sure our pot, our water of pot, our pot of water is done. Do you guys want, you're right. you want music on or off? You see what you're making Let's turn that off. How to look concertos. Good for Italian. We're making yeah. Italian. I got a concerto. Oh, right in the back of the Thank you for commenting. I think we're good. Jennifer, are you good? All right. We're, we're letting, letting people in. There you go. We're letting everybody in. Hey, Facebook world, how are you guys doing tonight? I'm here with the chef. You know Chef June. I guess. And my wife, Beth Ryder. And we yeah. got a fabulous dinner. Chef, why don't you tell them what the heck we've got going on tonight? Well, we're going to do a little uh, shrimp Alfredo with some sautéed spinach. And we're going to put over a bed of homemade pasta. Have you ever made pasta before? I did have an opportunity to make some pasta just a little while ago, and I learned some great secrets. I had no idea that pasta was just flour, water, and we used egg. Egg. Little yeah, we, made a, we made a little volcano. Got it whipped it together. There we go. All yeah, right. so what we want to do is we want to make sure uh, we got all of our prep area ready to go, our mise en place, everything in its place. So everyone at home, if you don't have your shrimp out, thawed, peeled, hopefully you'll get there soon. We're ready to go there. We have our pasta dough that's been out. Come up to room temperature a little bit. We want to make sure that we still have it nice and sealed tight. No air, no dryness, right? That's right. We want to make sure that we have our pot of water just coming up to temperature. You don't want to bring it to a foil just yet because we still got some things to do. So make sure that's on. It's got a nice medium heat and that way once we're ready to drop our pasta in, we'll be able to go from there. So just take a minute, make sure you start your water, make sure your shrimp is ready to go. So that as we approach that in our um, in our cooking class tonight, you're ready. And remember, don't put hot water on the shrimp. Cold water. Always thaw under cold water, correct. Especially with seafood shrimp like this, because that hot water will end up cooking the outside of the shrimps with just the temperature of your pasta water. So always thaw under cold water. Perfect, great to know. All right, well, we got our mise en place all ready to go. So let's, let's get rolling. Let's get, let's get, rolling. Let's get rolling. rolling. All right. I remember Mama Luigi used to have one of these. Well, we're getting going. Jennifer, how many people do we have on? Does anybody have any questions to start? Yeah. Uh, 15 people. 15, 15 guests tonight. Families there were Welcome. Welcome, guys. We're so happy that you decided to join us tonight, and we are going to have fun. I think the only thing I'm missing is my glass of wine. Vino! Just a minute. <laughs> All right. We want to make sure we have some flour for our cutting board here. We want to make sure we have a sheet pan like this, so that, that way, once we get our dough to the perfect thickness, I'll then show you another trick to roll it up and cut it into whatever size sections of pasta that we'd like, so we can determine if we want big old fat pieces or little tiny skinny pieces just kind of goes from there. So that's Perfect. the difference between pastas is the thickness and the width of the pasta to determine whether it's a spaghetti or an angel hair or a fettuccine. So we're going to take a little bit of flour. We want to dust our board. You guys can use your countertop if you'd like. I don't recommend cutting it on your countertop, but we got a nice big cutting board, little sheet pan here. This is where our pasta is going to dry after we cut it. Perfect. Make sure you get a little on your hands. That way your dough doesn't stick to it as much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a good, probably about a quarter size of dough from our bowl here. And while Chef is doing that, do we have any questions about your dough at home? Does anybody have any questions on how their dough turned out? Any questions on the dough process? Are you so, seeing anything in there, Jennifer? If it's a little sticky coming out of the wrap, just a little dough on there. See how 
our little flower, flower onto there. Yep. See how it kind of binds it a little, doesn't stick to your hand so much. So That's a good idea. Yeah. And then what we want to do is we're going to want to stretch it like a pizza pie, right? So we want to get it because we don't want to roll it out from a big old ball. It's we'll be here all night. So okay. So it helps to stretch it yep. so that you're not rolling as long. Once we've let that out. pasta set like when we made it let it rest in the fridge and that's what gives it this elasticity. So then you pull it out, let it come up to room temperature a little bit. And what I'm doing is if you see, I'm trying to make the dough the same consistency throughout the entire slab of dough. If it starts getting a little sticky like that, a little flour to it, yeah. So you're really checking the thickness of it while you're trying to spread it or? Yeah, it so out. thin it out. I'm trying to get it to a good consistency for when we start to roll so that that way, we're not just, you know, overworking one area or one side's too thick and the other side's too thin. Right, because the thicker the pasta, the longer it takes to cook. Right, and then the chewier it is when you're going to Makes eat it. Point. Right, yeah. so, I mean, if you like a little thicker pasta, you'll be okay, if not then. Take it then. Absolutely. So, we'll get our workout on. Got some flour on our board. It's gonna stretch, so make sure we got flour around. If you gotta add flour at any time, feel free to do so. And then we're just gonna work it back and forth, evenly pressing it out. And we're gonna make a turn here. See how elastic it is? Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna need to cut a chunk of this off, which is okay. as it spreads out a little more, you're going to apply a little more pressure. Okay. Be a smarter heater. I was going to say it's probably good yeah. to turn that sucker. <laughs> or we'll just have to cut another chunk off. Yeah. You know, much it stretches, right? So the beauty is we're halfway into our next rolls. So see how thick we're at right here? We're gonna wanna go thinner than that. We're about a okay, quarter of an inch thick, right? And we did wanna point out that if you did not have time mm -hmm. to prepare for the pasta portion, you could use a fresh pasta like this as a substitution. It will still be good and it's more fresh than using the preservative, the other packages that aren't found. In yeah, these are fresh doughs like this that are then fully dried so that that way you can just go ahead and drop them. The cook time is relatively about the same. It's about eight to 10 minutes, depending on what brand or what and time you're And this is nine minutes, so it's exactly the middle. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a great example of what you could do if you're, you don't wanna make the pasta yourself. But it's nice to know how to do it when you do have the time. And it's really not hard. And like, like we're saying, how do you get the kids involved in the kitchen? So this perfect, is a perfect, perfect opportunity. This and pizza, because they'll just love building their own pizza. Stuff. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So you see how thin. Ooh, those take thin. Our pasta's got how much we've stretched out of it. So now see how thin we are here. Not paper enough. thin, but just enough to wear. Right. And so then the trick, if I may. Yes. This is straight from Italy. What you do now. Kind of little thin. We learned this from Grandpa Cicero. Yeah. So you take your dough like such, and you roll it up just gently over each other. You don't want to stick it together. Just like this. Now watch this. Then you take your knife. So depending on the thickness, we could go that for a noodle. We could go thicker and go that for a noodle. So it depends on what we're looking for. For our dish today, I think we'll go with something. It's probably going to be right in the middle there. So we'll go about a finger width for each one of these cuts. The reason we're gonna go with a thicker than like a spaghetti 
is because with Alfredo sauce, you want it to coat that noodle and it's going to stick to it. So you have that heavier, wider noodle, more pasta, so to speak, so that that way. And then boom. Roll them out. Let them dry out a little bit. And then homemade pasta on its way. And we're glad to see that you're not uh, shy about where you got that secret. Hey, the last hey. time we were making pasta. I'm a firm believer in uh, sharing knowledge. Absolutely. So That's from generation to generation. I like it. So I figured I'd pass it on to our viewers <laughs> so that that way they too can pass it on as well. So how and if you, you have any pasta? secrets that you know about, you make sure you share them on the chat in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Uh, how long am I going to want to let it sit out? Yeah, how long do we let our pasta dry? Um, I'm it, 30 minutes if you wanted to. I wouldn't wait that long. I mean, I'd give it like a good 10, 15 minutes. And it's still good. Mm -hmm. okay. What happened? You don't want it to get over dry so that some spots of the pasta are like uh, more crunchy when you go, right? When we go to put it in the water. So some will cook more than others because of that. So. We just want to make sure that we're evenly done there. All right. How's everybody coming along? How's your pasta rolling out? Any questions? How many how many hand rollers do we got out there? Oh, it looks like three. Three people are rolling by hand. There we go. This guy. We'll roll them this way so that way we get a longer pasta strand. Um, we do have a question. It says, Why would we dry the pasta? Isn't it better to cook it fresh? It, we're not drying it out, we're just letting it come air dry a little bit so it doesn't stick together and get mushy when we're cooking it. And then Greg say, said, We are rolling, that is for sure. <laughs> Fantastic. Smaller pieces will roll out better. And share some pictures. Don't forget to send pictures in the chat box as well. Yeah, I the pictures turned out excellent from our last. They did. Yeah. I love seeing the photos. Absolutely. So it's a good memory. Take some pictures each step of the way. See how you did it. Mm -hmm. See how it turned out. <laughs> From one time to the next, it's a lot of fun. And if you have any ideas that you guys would like to see us make, feel free to either reply to our email or throw it in the chat box because we've got the chef that knows how to do it just about anything. Isn't that right, Chef? That is right. He's also available for catering, aren't you, Chef? I sure am. You can find me on Chef J. Vangelis. On Instagram. Now I just have a page that I started up on Facebook as well. Message me there. We'll set up your party as simple as hot dogs to five course dinner. So there whatever you you're go. looking for, we Four can, we can make blankets. Hey, <laughs> I'd be up for that challenge. Sounds like fun. All right. So we'll get started with that. Raj, some people would love to attend a dessert class. A dessert class? Like creme brulee dessert? You know, Chef, one of my specialties is uh, strawberries jubilee. Ooh, that'd be fun. Or we could just do berries jubilee. There are all kinds of different wild berries. Yeah, that would be a good one. And I taught that to my niece, and she absolutely loves it. We put that over fresh. Hagen Dots ice cream. Ooh. Maybe we even make ice cream. Okay, I got a machine. Oh, what do you We're think? In business. We're in business. We make ice cream and we do a berry jubilee. Excellent. Oh. All right. So once our pasta set, all remember it's not going to dry out. All it's doing is just kind of air drying a little bit. So that, that way, when we put it in, we don't just get a big old dough ball and start whisking that together. So that's what will help it stay. So you Separated. might you might see that you might have a little extra dough because yep. in the effort of time we're not going to make that whole all that pasta. What should they do with their dough if they want to 
Just make it up tonight to do. What do they do with it so they could keep save it till tomorrow? Maybe? Keep it tightly wrapped. Yeah. What I was saran wrap. Uh huh. Um, with this kind of dough like this, you're not going to want to let it sit for more than 48 hours. Okay. What's going to happen is it'll start to grow yeast and then that'll be like a sourdough. So utilizing it fresh, that's the whole purpose of this part. Gotcha. And refrigerated because we have egg in it. So we don't want it to sit out for too long at room temperature. Could it be pizza dough for tomorrow night? It could be pizza dough tomorrow night. It's just missing a little bit of sugar in that that's in pizza dough. So, I mean, yeah, we could roll it out, make some garlic knots or whatever yeah garlic knots make so there might thicker. be some other things to do with that in an effort of time we just make enough for tonight but you still have some leftover you can do anything with it tomorrow or absolutely more pasta tomorrow. Well, more pasta. Pasta. perfect put the kids to work if you do like i do a lot of times if i have something extra i google it and they say what would go good with leftover dough or mm -hmm. what can i make with leftover dough absolutely what are we going to do you bet. So you can do that with all kinds of stuff. You have leftover chicken or uh, extra shrimp. I made a shrimp dish the other night with uh, just a light oil sauce. It's just not even a sauce. Right, real fresh and vibrant. And I put uh, jalapenos in there. There you go. It had a nice little bite to Speaking it. Speaking my final language right yes, there. Indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, let's get moving on. Next, we're going to want to make our Alfredo sauce so that can get going because our shrimp process is a fast cooking process. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have our sauce pot. And what do we have? Are we still just keeping our water warm? Just, you put oil in there? I put a little bit of olive oil in our water and a little bit of salt. So, you want to lightly salt your water. Um, so, obviously. ours is just gently, not even. Boiling. We're nope, not boiling. It's right at hard. it's right at temperature. So do you yep. want to show it so that, that way here? We don't want we don't want a rolling boil. And especially when we put our pasta in, we wouldn't want it to rolling boil, but we do want it to be a little bit hotter than this. So it is like slightly starting to roll. Okay. Mm -hmm. A simmer is what we're looking for. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So we got our pants all nice and hot there. What we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to add some butter. I want to add a little bit of garlic. Not too much, not too little. And then our whisk is over here. We right? top dress. This time we're going to need a whisk. And what we're going to want to do is just saute this garlic a little bit just to kind of caramelize it, enhance the flavor. We don't want to get it brown essentially. Just probably once our butter's melted, we're going to want to cook the garlic for maybe a minute, two minutes at max. Not on really high heat because we don't want to burn that garlic. If that garlic gets burnt, sauce is trash. Absolutely. Because it'll be bitter and you can't fix it. It's starting to smell that garlic. Yeah, it smells amazing. I love garlic. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing right here, right now, is we're making a roux. We have our fat, which is going to be butter. Yeah. We're going to be adding a little bit of flour. And you know, since we use measuring cups around here, we'll measure appropriately. And there's one tablespoon. That's about two tablespoons. Four pinches mm -hmm. equals two tablespoons. <laughs> Depends on who's pinching. Right. Right? So, <laughs> so you want to be careful. So. When adding and you're not measuring appropriately, you always want to start with less. So it's easier to add more flour. It's harder to add. Harder to take out the flour. Right. But if you did add too much flour, then we just need to add a little more fat to it. So yeah. since what we're looking for is, see how we're kind of loose and like slightly binding together. We want it to be a little bit thicker than that. And once we get that consistency, we're going to want to cook it for about one to two minutes. So that that way, what that does is it, um, activates the flour with the butter to then become a thickening agent. Okay, because that's looking a little thicker than I would have thought. So it's see how it loose still so, so see when we stir it like this, you yeah. can see how it clumps together. Exactly. As soon as we stop and it starts to flow back into one, right. that's the consistency we're looking for. And since we're making a white sauce, we're not going to want to cook it so it turns brown. So we're turning our heat down slightly. So that that way we keep our sauce white. If right. we were to make a brown sauce, we would cook this till it was a blonde color. So more brown than this is real beige, white. pale, I would say, right? Yeah. So there's three kinds of roux. There's this roux, a white roux, a blonde roux, and then a dark roux. Dark roux are really black and smells like burnt popcorn, but it tastes delicious. Moly. 
Well, not necessarily <laughs> mole, but how you would process of getting there. But uh, dark brews are more cooked in with uh, Creole style Cajun cooking. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sense. That's where a lot of that flavor comes from. All right. So, see, right there without getting too brown, you're going to want to add. So watch this process here. When you add a little bit of cream at a time, we're tempering. So see how thin and then how thick it gets. Right. Right. So stirring constantly is where we want to go. So once we've kind of tempered that and we still have that velvety texture to it, right. then we can go ahead and add the rest and whisk in. So the whole container. Absolutely. Well, we're gonna we're gonna add more too. So. Diet aside tonight. Well, without the pasta, this really wouldn't be too or the flour. <laughs> Got me with the flour. I'll use almond flour and there you go. Okay. Keto friendly. Okay. Yeah. That's a good idea. Almond yeah. flour. Mm -hmm. Coconut flour, almond flour. I use almond oil. Mm -hmm. So I'm going a little keto there. So this guy. And Jeff, just out of curiosity, when people do gluten-free, what are they trying to cut out of their diet there? The gluten, which is uh, the grain, so wheat products, essentially. So really, if you're gluten-free, you just want to cut out the wheat because wheat just isn't really that good for you. Correct. When the craze, how many years ago? Almost a decade wheat ago. Wheat bread. The wheat, the wheat craze. Wheat pasta. Wheat, wheat this. Wheat, yeah. Wheat, yeah, everybody was eating wheat. Yeah. So <laughs> now wheat is out. Yeah, they've realized that your body's just not processing it appropriately. So, so this guy's like, I mean, it's going to come to temp, so our cream's going to temp. We want to keep an eye on it. Okay, so we want to turn our heat down to a simmer. Once it comes up to temperature, we're going to actually, right now, we, we want to add a little bit of white pepper, ground white pepper. For what we have right here, we have, what do we do? A, a quart. Yeah, we did one quart of cream. We'll add, we'll start with a teaspoon. A white pepper, and then the key ingredient, nutmeg. Just don't tell anybody. Oh, never would have figured that one out, Chef. About a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. So both of these spices are very pungent, and very, very strong. So you want to not overpower our cream sauce with them but we want to why the white pepper versus so you don't pepper. notice it so you don't see it in our sauce so there's no chunk so the difference between this and old country gravy right that right. you serve on biscuits or on chicken fried steak is the black pepper the white pepper start with your roux add your milk today we added cream so it's going to be a little richer right <clears throat> so that's why you would do the white pepper so you don't have big old flakes of, but you still have the flavor. But so you're we're getting the flavor, just not having the color. Correct. And that would, I, we that do would not be ever, why we would always use white pepper. You could. And, and As white opposed, dish. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, if we were trying to camouflage it, that's why. We yeah, and then, you know, like we've said before, once we get to this point, we add different cheeses, it becomes, you know, macaroni and cheese, this is the base right. of that. And then we add all the different cheeses to it. Everything, that Gouda, Deliciousness right there. A little beer if you wanted. Oh, know. so whatever. Bacon. Hey, we'd start with the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> we would start there. Mm -hmm. So now uh, this guy's going to come up to temperature. We're going to want to get some Parmesan cheese ready. So once that's ready to go, which is going to be real quickly. So when you're adding the cream or the milk, the reason we temper it. And so that that way it'll thicken faster. If we just dump it all in, we can create roux balls, which will be little clumps right. of the roux that's going to stay in there. And once that's in there, you can't whisk it out. You'll have to fish them out. And then when you go to smush, it'll be dry flour. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, we don't want that. So this guy. Good point, because I have and made it the other way. way. <laughs> Where you have little flour out. balls. So here's a here. So I understand that that could happen. So yeah. back to uh, when we were learning about it before doing the, one of the other sauces is when we're working with roux, we want to add our liquid to the roux. 
Correct. Right. And if we're making a sauce and we're using cornstarch, we would add the cornstarch to the hot liquid. Right. Right. You could add roux to a dish like this, and it would be cheating if you used olive oil or your um, oiling or your choice and made a little paste with the flour. You would want it to be runny, like a honey consistency. Right. And you could whisk that in slowly to where it would thicken what you're doing like without that. creating those little balls. Yeah. So this guy's coming up to temperature oh, yeah, as you see. Good. What we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna turn it down in just one second, as soon as we add some cheese to it. So like if we wanted to add bright chicken stock, we add some chicken stock to that, and create a little more flavor if you'd like, but this time we're, we're wanting to have a rich, cheesy sauce without overpowering or masking the delicacy of the shrimps. So we want that to come true and to be a fresh component to the palate and to the dish. So we don't, and working with spinach, so we don't want it to be so overpowering. Right. Right. So we're gonna add some cheese to this, not too much at a time, because you are gonna wanna whisk it so that that way you can see already how it's starting to thicken up a little Absolutely. bit more. And the thing for all these years, I just took out that brown or that package of Nor and just ripped it open. Ripped it open and put in some milk and butter. Never would have thought that you had all the other ingredients to do it right here, right? I'm telling you, Chef, you are teaching us so much. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Like I said, passing on knowledge, one way to go. So there, that's about the consistency we're looking for. So nappe to coat the back of a spoon. So we don't want it to be too thick or too thin. We're learning a lot of French here. <laughs> Absolutely. About coats the back of the spoon. So this guy now can jump to the back burner on low, real low. If it comes out. I don't think it gets too thick. Add more, add some milk. Or, or cream. Or more cream if you'd like. You can add, I mean, you can see right here how ours is. We're going to turn it off so for a just thing, a second. So if it's a little thick, they could add just milk or cream, or would you prefer milk? I would prefer the milk. Only reason being is you'll add less milk. Cream so thick okay. Okay. already. So as you can see right now, as that cheese is thickening up that sauce, right. I still have a, a consistency. Like I said, that's not super thick, but as it sits, so ours was getting ours was getting too hot. It, we want to let cool right. down a little Turn bit. Turn it off and let it cool down. Yeah, because we don't the want other way to cool it down quickly. Right, we don't want to boil it or we don't want it to simmer so long because our sauce is essentially done. Right. If we were adding cornstarch, so if it's too thin, you can make a little bit of cornstarch. Just take some cornstarch in your little dish, like this probably a tablespoon and then turn your water on real slow and just barely dab it in and mix it around so it's like kind of gummy like and then whisk a little bit of it at a time okay. and you'll see how fast and how thick quick it yeah is. the cornstarch does yeah. so so for the person that needed to get theirs not as thick did you try the milk did that work out it's just yeah. adding a little bit at a time it worked it yeah. worked okay good you can even so another thing that you can add water. It's not like we're adding a gallon of water. Right, so we're, not, be a little bit. we're not changing the flavor. We just want to change the viscosity. So therefore that water will help thin it out without changing any flavors. If we were adding this much water to it, then our flavor would be lost a lot because it would be drowned out by the water. Yeah. Makes sense. Let it drip. All right. Next, we're ready to get our shrimp going. We're going to do this... Uh, Last, the, the spinach will be our last ingredient to hit the pan. Okay. So, so don't forget, we still got the spinach sitting aside. Let's, I'd say we could drop our pasta. I don't want to get everyone too crazy. So here's a trick, our colander in our drawer here. Yes. Perfect. So if we get our colander ready in our sink. So that way that will be ready to go when we're ready to go. Perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna wanna do is we need our spoons. See our, our water is like at a simmer. It's not at a rolling boil like 
see how that's at a high boil rolling like that yeah we don't want it to be like that we want to turn it down you need that perfect thank you so see how it's just at a simmer as such so the bubbles are slowly coming up to the surface that's what we're looking for we already got our oil in there we already got a little bit of salt in there now when we're doing pastas like this we want to make sure that we're stirring them so when you put a little in so we'll put a little handful in and we want to stir them because what happens is when it's releasing the starch the gluten that we don't have them stick together and just become a dough ball right inside of them. so when we're using our little nests where you grab those nets the nests the little pasta nest. Oh, these. Yep. So okay. these guys right here, you'll just drop them in just like that. And you'll see, let them, they'll start to unfold a little bit and then just put your spoon in there and stir it around. Yes, so it breaks up that pasta. Yes. Yep. Gotcha. I wasn't sure what a nest was when you were looking for your nest. I'm like, what am I looking for? There's no birds in here. I know. <laughs> so we'll okay, get this now down. All the pasta nests. And they're not sticking together, which is great. So we can say we cool down our water. We're just going to slightly turn it up so that way it'll keep that low simmer going. And then this so guy. So you're not really boiling it. I always thought you had to really boil, boil pasta, like come to a full boil. You, you can if you want to. It depends on how hungry you are and how fast you want to Because it, that's right? really the speed. Yeah, so with our fresh pasta, it's more delicate than that pasta, the one you're buying in the blue box at the store, right? right. So, you know, with those ones, they're really firm and stiff. So it's going to be able to take that beating from the water. And in here, we don't need it to do that. We just need to cook the dough. Okay, so, well, that makes sense. That makes so sense. this guy, they're all separated. They're all doing good. So this will take, we'll check it in about four minutes to see where we're at. Yeah. Take for pasta, as you can see, how it thickened up a little bit as it, it went into the water. Absolutely. So that's why the thinner you can get that dough without it being see-through, the better we are. I mean, and when we did it last time, the pasta was great like this. It so was it great. Out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That guy's gonna do its thing. Moving on to our shrimp. We're gonna wanna get our saute pan ready. Saute pan ready. I'm gonna bring your shrimp over. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna get our pan nice and hot. Let it heat up. High heat or saute. And you're heating it up just the pan, nothing on it? Correct. As okay. of right now, what we wanna do is we wanna get our pan hot. So we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil and butter. We're not gonna add the butter right away. We'll add the butter in the end of it. Okay. okay. The reason being is we don't wanna burn our butter. So right. we're gonna saute with our oil. So if you add your oil to your cold pan and heat it up, it's then getting hot and raising temperature at once. When we were doing the steaks for our um, beef wellingtons, right. we wanted our pan to be super hot. So then that way when you lay it down, it has that nice sear to it. Exactly. So get your pan, get it going, get it hot, and then add your fat to it so that that way it doesn't burn because of the cooking temperature that this will burn at. As Makes it's sense. heating up your pan. So this could be burned and your pan's not that hot yet. Understand, that okay. makes sense. Okay. So we need an empty bowl. Make sure everyone has an empty bowl ready because we're going to transfer our cooked shrimp into that to rest for just a minute while we finish our dish. Okay, fantastic. So we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. So the pan is warm, the oil goes on. Uh -huh. Got it. Keeping our All right, as soon as we see that that oil is going to start to ripple a little bit, which is almost right where it's at there. See how it spreads right away around the pan? It's a good heat for it. All right. Chef, I just want to say I've been using this mm. technique lately and it works like a charm. It's a world of difference, it's isn't it? It's a world of difference. So we're going to add our garlic and then our shrimp. The garlic's going to be a fast process. Why? Because our pan's nice and hot, right? We don't want to burn it. That's right. And you hear it sizzle as it goes yep. in, so you know it's warm. So you turn around and stir your pasta for three minutes and garlic burn. So you want to make sure that you're ready to go. That crackle sound, that's what we're waiting for. Okay. 
So a shrimp this size takes about anywhere from six, seven minutes to cook all the way through. What's that? We're about to right now. We are the now question getting... was, did we season the shrimp yet? And Chef is saying not yet. We're doing it right now. And you could if you'd like, if you wanted to throw a simple marinade, a little olive oil, lemon juice, oregano. You could do that and season our shrimp ahead of time and marinate it. We're adding those ingredients to the pan, so it's not going to make too much of a difference. Fantastic. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So let's raise our heat here. We're going to make sure we have our other ingredients ready, our oregano, our wine. We're going to need a lemon. Uh, one of the tricks with lemon is how to get your juice out, right? So a lot of people... Check out possible. Ooh, almost there. I'm gonna turn this guy off so it can just rest in the water. Finish cooking, so without overcooking. So that guy's there. Take your lemon, pull like such, squeeze it, and rub it like this. What happens is it then releases all those juices, breaks up the membranes on the inside. So that way, when you go to squeeze it in. Oh, it's really juicy. Mm -hmm. And then you can put it in a strainer. I always just make a little cup with my hands. Let the lemon juice drip through. Catch your lemon Catch your seed. seed. <laughs> yeah. So that's one of the things there. So at the same time that we're adding our lemon juice here, we're also deglazing the pan as we cook too. So we're adding flavor and we're stripping the flavors off the soft egg that have stuck to the pan. So, and a little right there. How's everyone's shrimp looking? Is it cooking? Any questions? Missed the guy. Oh, have a little tail. Got a little tail left on one. Yeah. Jeff, are you are you having a taste? Not yet. We're not there yet. We're on oh, there. Too? Okay. Yeah. Little show. Little show won't hurt anybody. It's all right. Mother show. We're good. We're good. Oh, we need to go. We need to all go. All right. Let's check our pasta here. Give it a stir. They say don't try this at home in the movie. So we're all at home. Ooh, see how we're all almost, let's look at the consistency of our dough here. See how we're almost cooked all the way through. There's yeah, still that so little nice. tiny line, yep, so little right. tiny line of uncooked dough there. So we're almost there. Turning that off was a good thing since our shrimp's finishing up. All right, I'm gonna shrimp stir here. What we're gonna wanna do now, So, Chef, for people that are a little apprehensive as to put in some salt, why uh, should you put in some salt? To, what, what's the importance of that season? So, salt does two things. One, it enhances the flavors in the dish. You know, if a lot of people say, oh, it needs more salt, it needs more salt. That's because they're used to tasting just the salt and not actually the flavors in which we're cooking. Sure. But the salt does enhance the flavors. Salt also does another thing for marinades and brines is it actually molecularly, right? Allow what it does too is it traps the, um, the proteins essentially into the muscle tissue, right? So that that way it stays moist. So it actually creates moisture. For your meal. Why are you drying a chicken or brine a turkey? But feeling in the flavor, basically. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And it's not going to hurt you. I mean, if you want to, you're going to want to use some of that, right? So now we're ready to add. We're going to add a little wine.
And now for people to go, wine? Well, am I going to get drunk? Aren't we going to burn that off? We are going to cook all the alcohol off at this point. If you had a little vino on your ship, are you complaining? I'm not complaining. All right, all right. I just wanted to make sure for the decoders, it's actually going to burn that alcohol right off. Absolutely. But preserve the flavor. Mm -hmm. So right now, what we want to do is we want to add a pad of butter. We want to add that, that fattiness, that butter flavor to our shrimp. At the end, which most people do at the beginning. Right, and the reason we're doing that at the end is so we have the flavor. So we're not cooking it off. Correct. So we're just going to let that bend down. Those look good. We're going to take our empty bowl. And what are you looking for? How can everybody tell when their shrimp is done? So firm but springy, right? Firm but springy. Okay. Yep. You don't want to overcook shrimp and it'll Nothing overcook. Clear. You don't want clear. No, if you're using the tiger shrimp, it'll be a pink color like this. Our shrimp was a little bit pink to start with. So um, we're there, but you can see how firm, but yet still kind of spongy bouncy right? right we want it to bounce a little bit because you can overcook your shrimp so don't overcook it no we want to pull our shrimp now let me turn this off we're going to put it right put back it right down okay. so you can put the let's put it on. now we're going to add a little butter And then this guy, we still have our nice high heat. I love one thing that I've learned from you quite a bit is reusing the same half. All we that flavor, all that same flavor half. that we got in there, we might as well use it, right? So with I our spinach, that. we're just going to kind of wilt this down. What we're going to want to do. Is and spinach wilts down fast and much smaller. Yeah. And so you'll see what we're going to do is how it's like this. We're just going to lightly kind of stir it around and it's going to start to wilt down. And then we're going to add a little bit more at a time. And we're just, we're, we don't want it to really, really cook because we don't want it to be so soggy. We want it to have some depth and be able to taste it. Right. As opposed to just have these green stringy things into our pasta. Absolutely. Right? We'll see how High heat, nice and fast. That's real from down. Add another little handful. And that would be one um, bag of spinach. Okay. One pound bag. Ten ounce bag. Okay, a ten ounce bag. Like one ten ounce okay. bag, and see how much it cooks down. So right here, add a little bit of wine. So there's two things we could do at this point. We can add our shrimp back to it, turn it off, let it come together, blend it all together, right? But we are, for plating purposes, we're gonna keep it separate today. Everything's nice and hot, nice and fresh. That's off, this is off. Spinach releases a lot of water it too. It does. So yeah. see, we wanna be able to capture that so that that way, all that extra moisture that we don't need is in our pasta, so to speak. So, all right, there's that, there's that, and then our pasta. And what we'd like to do from here is we want to add a tiny bit of oil. And then to give that a stir. Just lightly stir. And what happens is then that now coats our noodles so they don't then become clumpy oh, or strained. Right? 
Makes perfect sense. All right. We're ready for Plato. Oh, fantastic. Uh -huh. So, let's see. Like a white, you're gonna get a white ball. Yeah, sure. Okay. Tongs in there. Yep, tongs in there. Oh, cute are <laughs> I love tongs in the kitchen, so I always buy a bunch. They're definitely useful things to have. Can we bring the plate over? It can just sit right here on my board again. Absolutely. So plate up is always important. It right? is. I love the way you plate. Okay, so we're thinking about what do we got? We got shapes. We got colors. Obviously, we're going to go with the pasta mm -hmm. on here, so we want to build it up a little bit. All right. If it's, especially if it's going to be on a plate. So if you take it and just like you would eat pasta, do the little spin, which will spin. We we'll basically want to make a little bed. Don't get you crazy. And we're going to add. Little sauce, not too crazy, but just a tiny bit to coat our noodles. Do you another spoon? Work. So I'm trying to debate, let's do this. Okay, that looks amazing. What we'll do is we'll think, find two nice ones that we can kind of right in the middle, right on the top. Oh, look at that. Like so, right? Then to finish it off, what we want to do. Make this nice and take a little bit of lemon juice and squeeze it. And done. Amazing. I'm going to say, voila. Absolutely that was fantastic. Amazing now, job. how does everyone look at home? I'm really interested to see all of your photos of how your pasta turned out. You can also eat pasta in a bowl if that suits you better. A bowl is would be a good, you know, opportunity, but you want a bowl that's going to be a little wider. So putting pasta into a bowl like such, you can see now that it's going to be too hard to eat. Right? Exactly. So with it being more pasta. open like this, and you want to be real traditional Italiano, you'd have your spoon and your fork and you'd sure it. And Perfect. Dive no, in and go amazing. from there. Lovely. Anybody want to share pictures? Anything you guys want to share? Or are you just diving right into dinner? Do we have any questions? It looks like people are just not quite getting to the plane. That's okay. Yet. The plating so, is the key because that's when you actually get everything right to the plate, nice and hot. And that's when everybody sits down and eats. As a chef, you want people to eat it while it's hot. Right, oh, I chef? like the drizzling on top too. Well, and then to kick it up enough. Okay, kick it. it up. Yes. Let's see what else you can do with the plating. I like it. What better? Oh, I love Add more color. Yes. I love fresh plate. I love that. Yeah, a basil leaf, little basil leaf on top, and now you just Great idea. From eating in style. <laughs> Fantastic. Are they catching up, Jennifer? I think so. Well, while everyone's catching up and asking any questions, anyone got any questions out there? Let us I know. I think this is going to be my turn. <laughs> Make sure everything came out great to them. The pasta uh, was a little thicker than they wanted, so they'll work on it next time. Yeah, really getting that pasta as thin as possible because you can see when you added it to the water, it did plump up. It right? did, absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
And I think we have Leon is getting ready to play. Cindy, did you have a place that you wanted to share? Who who did you ask? Cindy. Cindy. She said now or Cindy, are you gonna show us a play? Betty, Joe, are you gonna show us a play? I am. All right, let's see. Boy, it looks like we have a lot of chefs. I sent a, I sent a plate. Okay, great. Oh, perfect. Jennifer is making all her comments. Jennifer, everything look good? <laughs> great. Well, no, it's helpful because we're all doing this together. I love sharing what you guys have done at home. It's just fantastic. Betty Jo wants to know what she can do with the leftover sauce. Perfect question. Great. As Steve mentioned earlier, um, we can make pizza dough. And what do we have? Blanco sauce, white sauce for pizza dough. Ooh. So roll one out. What you do is then take, take your flour, out. leave it a little bit thicker than you would do. You would take your pizza stone or a cookie sheet. You would pre-bake it slightly. So probably about 10 minutes. Um, so that way it forms a crust and cooks it mostly, but not fully. Okay. What happens is once we add the sauce to it and our other ingredients, it's gonna add moisture. It's not gonna allow the dough to cook properly. The secret to cooking pizza doughs is cooking them on a high heat for a short period of time. Gotcha. That's why I like the brick ovens work so good because it's above 500 degrees and they cook so fast. So. And then to use your, your white sauce, how do you use that on your pizza? Just use it like your normal pizza sauce. Just spoon down, smooth it out, however you like. You could even, I mean, we could put the shrimp and Alfredo and tomatoes right on top of it. Artichoke hearts. Artichoke hearts are one of my favorites on pizza. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Throw some grilled chicken into that. Love that. Yeah. See, we will give you lots of ways to use that extra Alfredo sauce. That's Absolutely. perfect. I wasn't thinking pizza, but that's a great way to do it. And like we said, we already got most of the dough already done. Right. So you, like we just hand stretched it, pushed it out a little bit, hard bake it. So we want to make sure that it forms across. Right. And then it allows the dough to then cook all the way through with all of our ingredients on it. So mm -hmm. once we add our sauce. Okay. I'm not a, I'm not a it's melting the cheese to the pizza dough at that point. Right. It's still going to cook it some, but on the top, it won't cook very much as far as like a baking process goes because of the weight and the, the moisture that the liquid that we got to cook. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, guys, it's uh, pretty for much bon appetit. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it from the Ryder Lee team, Stephen Beth Ryder, and Chef Jim. Thank you much, guys. Have a great night. Yeah. Peace, Dish. Thank you. Bye. Peace out. <laughs>